In this podcast, we will be discussing sensitive topics such as sexual assault. It is important to take care of yourself while listening. Help is available through your local rape crisis center, and you can visit mcasa.org for more information on how to be connected. Hey everyone, it's Meredith, Training and Engagement Specialist at the Maryland Coalition Against Sexual Assault, and this is MCASA On The Go, the official podcast of the Maryland Coalition Against Sexual Assault. MCASA is the federally recognized state sexual assault coalition, providing training, technical assistance, and policy advocacy to rape crisis centers and member organizations across the state. MCASA also provides direct legal services to survivors of sexual assault through our Sexual Assault Legal Institute. In this podcast, we discuss topics including, but not limited to, sexual violence prevention and response, legal issues surrounding sexual violence, and highlighting the services available for survivors across the state of Maryland. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, where we work to build a connected community dedicated to ending sexual violence and supporting survivors. In fact, April 2022 marks the 21st anniversary of the first official Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So we thought, what a better way to celebrate than to spend some time talking to college students across the state about their prevention efforts on campus. Each week this month, I and MCASA's Policy Advocate for Prevention and Education, Maddie, will be sitting down with student groups to discuss their sexual violence prevention efforts and how they're making an impact in their campus communities. Today, we sit down with Shriam, Katie, and Olivia from Hartford Community College's Sexual Assault Violence Education Program. All right, good morning. Welcome to the podcast. It's so great to have the three of you with us today, joining Maddie and myself. Um, Just to start with some introductions, um, the folks who listen to the podcast know me by now. My name is Meredith. I'm the training and engagement specialist at MCASA, but I'll give the floor to folks to introduce themselves as well. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maddie LeCure. I'm the policy advocate for prevention and education, and we are very excited to have three students from Harford Community College here with us today to talk about their work with the Save Peer Educator Program. I will jump over to Katie and have you all introduce yourselves. So hi, my name is Katie. I am a nursing student at Harford. I'm also a dual student with University of Maryland where I'm getting my bachelor's concurrently with my associates. Um, I'm in my fourth semester now, so I'm about to graduate. Um, I'm also in a bunch of the clubs at Harford. So the Student Nurses Association and honors and things like that. My name is Shriam Bersha. Uh, I go by Shri. I'm a nursing student too. I'm in my fourth semester. I would be graduating this May in the summer, and I'm also in the dual enrollment with the Towson University. Uh, at the Harford, I have been a peer educator for the SAFE project for the year 2019 to 2020. So it was, I was during the time when it was a transition from in person to the COVID. So it was completely new experience for us. And I'm also involved with the Honor Society, the you know, Fiti Takapa Honor Society and the Nursing Student Association and also the SGA at the Harford Community College. My name is Olivia, and I have been a SAFE Project Peer Educator since June of 2021. I'm also a nursing student. I'm in my first semester of the nursing program. Great. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. I'm so excited to speak with you about your program and all of the great things that you're doing on your campus and in your community. So first, um, let's just start off by... Um, having you tell us a little bit about the Sexual Assault and Violence Education Peer Educators Program and the main goal of your program on your campus and your community. So the SAFE project, uh, the SAFE project is basically a sexual assault and violence education project at the Harford Community College. And the main goal of that project was to empower, like is to empower our campus community to take action to prevent the relationship violence. So we basically came to a like uh, the SAFE project uh, in order to put the action, we came to two parts, that's owls in action and owls in conversation. So owls in conversation was something we came up with during the COVID time when I was a peer educator and um, owls in action, basically owls in action is a bystander intervention workshop. So that that's, that's like, it's with SAFE project, it's like uh, whenever something happens uh, or if you see someone, you know, like a new or some new student stepped foot on your campus, it's like a new employee or a new student or a visitor. We always want them to know that violence is not tolerated on the campus. And that's how we came up 
like the KT and Don came up with the idea to introduce the owls in action for the safe project. Awesome. And so owls in action, do you do that for, is that mandatory for new students and new employees, or is it something you do on like a requested basis? So uh, Owls in Action is a workshop that's uh, basically a 60 minutes workshop that we have introduced to clubs, organizations, and also the classes. Uh, when I was a peer educator, we did it for the psychology classes and also the uh, classics for the cr criminal justice. And uh, also we do it for the clubs and the organizations. And it's not a mandatory workshop that everyone, every student has to do it uh, like for during the admission, but it's something that we introduce during the orientation so that the students or any new students, new employees, they know during the orientation that we have the save at our campus. So if anything happens, they can always contact us. And it's a means of an education program for them to teach them the ways to take action against anything that happens on the campus. And we also have the title line on our campus. So basically, we are also providing them the information regarding that. Wonderful. Awesome. Great, thank you. And then we'd love to hear from all of you of how you got involved with the SAVE program. I will jump to Olivia to start and then the rest of you can answer as well. Um, so I got involved because I saw an online uh, ad on the HTC website for a peer educator position and was interested. Um, this was in like spring of 2021, uh, so about a year ago, and I had been looking for a job and saw that it was sexual assault and violence education, and that just struck an interest because um, it's not something that I had heard about much. It's not something I was very aware of about prevention work. And so when I looked at the position and read about it, it I realized it was something that I would very much like to be part of um, to educate students about prevention and bystander intervention. I actually got involved with it. Um, so fall of 2020, I was in my first semester of nursing and I was attending one of the student nurses association class um, meetings, I would say. And Shree was actually there and I, was, I recognized her and she was doing the save presentation. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I would love to do that. And then I was also taking a psychology class on top of my nursing and it was mandatory in that class. So I attended it twice. And then after they were like, well, we need new peer educators for the next upcoming, you know, year span. Anybody is interested. And I was like, I'm interested. I'm interested. And then when the application came out, Katie had emailed me and was like, hey, I remember you were interested. And she sent me the information and I got the position. And I only did one semester because I realized it was a lot of work with my, on top of all of my classes that I was doing, it, I wasn't able to put in the amount of time that I wanted to, and I felt like the program deserved to have. So I stepped out of that position to allow other students who could put more time and effort into it to step into that spot. Um, so for me, it was, uh... I just like read a flyer. There was a flyer regarding the bystander intervention program, like outs in action. I just went through it and I was like, what actually does it mean? Because I knew about the SARC at that time. And I was like, this is not a, regarding SARC. It's not related to SARC. It is something similar to SARC. And uh, like I had heard a lot about the rape culture, like uh, how people think, uh, how helpless they feel when they are not able to do anything. Uh, and uh, I come from a country like India and I have seen things happening to the women and no one gets a stand there so this is something that really made me think and that's the reason I applied and I also had a story related to it like my cousin he stays in Chicago and it is something he did so when I like shared because he but when I first came here he was like informing me hey don't go there hey don't go there if someone does this do this hey if someone so that is something uh I can share that story so he and his friends were traveling in the metro in the Chicago and uh, a guy was harassing the girl and the girl was really uncomfortable. So what they did was they just like went there and started taking pictures with the girl and uh, posting something and talking to her. And that really made the guy that was making her uncomfortable move slightly moving away from there. I think that really made me think uh, at that point. And, I, uh, and during my interview also, I shared this with Katie and Dawn, like, this is something that I can think of right now, how you're describing the position to me. So I think that's the reason basically, like maybe because of my country and how I feel regarding the women impairment. So, yeah. 
Yeah, thank you for sharing that story. That's um, definitely one of the things that we think about when we think of bystander intervention is you don't have to be like this direct intervening. You can just distract, you can you know, find other ways to deescalate that situation. So thank you for sharing that. I also did wanna point out, are all three of you nursing students? I wonder if that also has to do with your interest in the club or maybe anything having to do with your future career goals. So about the nursing. So when I first applied to the position, um, one of the descriptions was to was um, active listening uh, to be able to practice that, recognize that, help students in a time of need, and that really resonated with me because I had been told you're going to be in very stressful situations as a nurse, um, and so I found that this position uh, would be something that would help me prepare for my future career, and that's one of the biggest one of the reasons why I chose to apply to the position in the first place. I think being in nursing really does help with the position, but it's also, nurses are mandatory reporters. Bystanders are not. And I think having information and education on both ways and how we can kind of group that together and give other students and other peers and community members kind of information and education on how to step in, what they can do, and what really they're not required to do, but I think it's a very good mix. And like Olivia said, I think that me being in the SAVE program really did help with my nursing program, uh, just with the active listening and communication and more about preventing rather than reacting. And um, that was it. Awesome. Thank you both for sharing. So we are recording this podcast today um, for Sexual Assault Awareness Month in April, highlighting student voices around the state. Um, Could you all talk about how you engage your campus community during Sexual Assault Awareness Month? So the SAVE project specifically, they always do um, that owls in action scenario, and they can tailor it to be more towards sexual assault or more towards domestic violence when we do that in the fall semesters. So they do a bunch of different um, presentations around campus for different clubs and classes and such. Um, They also have the campus, they encourage everybody to wear teal um, to kind of show your support. Sometimes they have like the signs all around campus. They actually had a virtual background because this, you know, COVID times um, that was teal and it had all the information on there, which I think is really awesome because that's such a minimum looking thing, but it can make such a huge impact. Just one person in, in a class of, you know, our nursing class is 75 students. Just one person could see that and see the number and reach out or look into it. And that alone is like such a passive conversation in itself that I think it's such a huge impact. I was just like add to what Katie said, uh, like some of the things that we used to like we did in the during the pandemic was uh, we used to post these stories uh, and the codes uh, on the Instagram or like uh, the codes or the stories would be like the small bystander tips, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, like doing a ghost more on Snapchat or or, uh, going on a private on the message. So no one sees if you read the message or not. So that are the some things we used to go and all we also used to also promote our acronym that's action that's one of our acronym so we used to promote it on the instagram that way this april um we are partnering with the office of student life is partnering with us to host an owls in action workshop uh, as part of the mindful monday series um and so that was thought of we thought of to do it in april specifically for that and so for that particular workshop it is open to um, every student on campus um, are invited to participate in the Mindful Monday workshops as part of the Office of Student Life. And so we will be promoting that um, and encouraging students to attend. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing all that. And looking at prevention as a, a year round topic that we're all working on, what other things do you do at Hartford to engage students in the campus community year round? Something I would like to put a shout shout out to what would be the healthy masculinity conversations uh, that are hosted. And I think one was hosted by Olivia. So she 
could give you more information regarding that, uh, but that is something we promote uh, during the year and also uh, hours in conversation, like 15 minutes talk uh, that could like inspire the students because sometimes we are not able to do 60 minutes uh, complete workshop. Uh, so that's, that's something that we promote for the prevention. We also do a uh, tabling in the student center. Um, we have our brochures and resources and different information um, that could be useful for students. One of the perks of being in student clubs is that you have a another voice to kind of bridge that gap in between, you know. And so as one of the board members on the Student Nurses Association, and Olivia is also a student nurse, and she, you know, collaborated with me and was like, let's do a safe presentation, which the Nurses Association has held before. And so we have two of them upcoming um, in April. I think it's like the second or third week of April. But besides that, like last semester, um, like for domestic violence month, Olivia and I and the other peer educator at the time kind of voiced the concern of, well, let's have purple shirts. Let's get purple shirts. And Katie and Dawn worked their magic and they got um, the student center to actually get in purple shirts that students could purchase to wear for domestic violence. And then there's also so many things that SARC has, the Sexual Assault Resource Center, that they do like um, a percentage of, the, of a percentage of sales goes towards them, you know? And I know that you don't have to be a peer educator to be involved in that kind of stuff. And I had sent it out to my cohort was like, hey, this is going on, we should go. And it actually was a good turnout. There was a good 20, 30 students that came out all in purple gear to support SARC and all that money went towards SARC. So it's little things that, that you think might not be a big impact, but it's a huge impact on the community around us. So just kind of giving the information out to other students when I find it and I see something that is very helpful, I pass the information along because that can make a huge difference, I think. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And shout out to SARC. They're one of our awesome rape crisis centers. And, you know, we partner with them and appreciate the hard work of all of their advocates. So I'm really glad that y'all are doing some work with them on your campus as well. So our last question for you all is, how can Harford students or other community members get involved with the SAVE program? Uh, we have our, uh, I would say like we have our, the SAVE has its own website on the uh, college, like the college website. And they also have uh, their own Instagram account too. Uh, and we like, they continue sharing the stories because uh, I'm also like, I can see the story shared by the SAVE project. So yeah, they are continuously sharing their stories on the Instagram account. Too. And also we have like a magazine, like I would say a watch or I would say a digital magazine like thing that goes on like two times a month. That's called News and Woes by the Hartford Community College. So Shark, uh, so Safe Project usually uh, puts their information you know, or the things they are being doing or the events they would be conducting in that News and Woes. So every faculty member or every staff or uh, student sorry, students are able to read about that. So they know uh, that we have a SAVE project still going on. So yeah, these are some of the things that the college does. Uh, we are currently uh, working on a series of posts to uh, explain the ACTION acronym. So if students, community members, um, anyone wants to go on Instagram and search SAVE project um, at HCC um, or Harvard Community College, uh, they're are those posts and you can like and comment and learn more about the action acronym which is an acronym that shares different ways of taking action in difficult situations uh, i would just say like uh sometimes uh you know getting involved uh, does not mean you need to attend the workshop or anything just like hearing them or uh, going to their website or just reading the bystander tips on the instagrams could be useful because uh, during the conversation with your friends where you think that your friend has been going about uh, going through something or if you see your family member is going through something you can always you know provide them with the tips oh hey uh, i just like heard about this uh, how about you try that or if you have any resources like sark because uh, the college usually has a table 
level of SARC at the uh, at the campus. So you know, just like get grab that resources, a number of a SARC or a small keychain or something they have. So whenever you see someone, you could always like provide them. Hey, that's a keychain for you. So if they have their, uh, you know, the person who's being uh, harming them just beside them, they could say, Hey, I think you dropped this, or I think this belongs to you, and it could be a keychain. So that person could doubt that, and that person could be helpful. You know, just like sharing the tips because that could be useful. Thank you again so much to Shri, Katie, and Olivia from Harford Community College for joining us today to talk about the SAVE Peer Educator Program. Great to hear about all the work you're doing on your campus and ways student and community members can get involved. Thank you so much, and we look forward to continued partnership. Thank you to all three of you again. It was so great to talk to you and excited to learn more about your program and see all the wonderful things that you guys do in the future. So thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to MCASA on the go. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to support our podcast, please be sure to subscribe to our channels, share on social media, and share with others in your network. To check out our other Sexual Assault Awareness Month student spotlight episodes, check out our Spotify, our YouTube page, or the MCASA website. Please be sure to follow us on social media as well. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at MCASA.org. To find your local rape crisis center or get information about MCASA and the Sexual Assault Legal Institute, check out our website and the description of this episode. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.